when you think of the name Thaddeus, what comes to mind? I know I'm drawing a blank, too. In this episode of the Midweek Refill with Bishop A. Reginald Littman, we're going to be talking about that disciple of Jesus whose name is Thaddeus. This week's title is Thaddeus, A Journey of Faith, Leadership, and Redemption. This is part 10. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and I'm excited to bring this teaching to you. This is part 10 of our series called Life Lessons from the Twelve Disciples. And each week for the past nine weeks, we've been walking through the life and the experiences of each of the twelve disciples. Apostles of Jesus Christ. This week is part 10, and we're excited to bring this to you as we share with you concerning the life of Thaddeus. And we're talking about a journey of faith, leadership, and redemption. Please do me a big favor and hit the like button, share, subscribe, and all of those good things. And be sure to leave a comment That helps to push this material out further so that others can find us in the very crowded algorithms of all of the different social media platforms. So we're excited to welcome you here this week. And I do want to remind you, as always, that down in the description box below, there is a free PDF handout that is designed for you to have full notes of today's teachings as well as personal discovery questions to help you take a deeper dive into the scriptures. Well, welcome again to our Bible study on Thaddeus, also known as Judas, son of James, or Lebius. So while Thaddeus may not be as prominently featured in the Gospels as some of the other disciples, his journey is nonetheless inspiring and it is filled with valuable lessons for us today. So let's embark on a journey through the scriptures to uncover the life of this faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Let's talk a little bit about his background and his calling. Thaddeus is not that prominent in terms of scripture, and oftentimes he does not appear nearly as much as the other disciples do. Yet he was chosen by Jesus Christ to accompany him in his earthly ministry. He's often referred to as Thaddeus or Labius, and that's L-E-B-B-A-E-U-S. And the reason for that is to distinguish him from Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Interestingly, in Scripture, One thing that you will see repeatedly in scripture, whenever you see the name Judas, it will always be attached with identifying him as the one who betrayed Jesus. Now, what a horrible way to be remembered in the echelons of time and eternity. I can see why adding the distinction to the name Thaddeus would be a great idea because no one wants to be known as the one that betrayed Jesus. So while details about his background and his profession are not extensively mentioned in the Bible, we do know that he was among those who followed Jesus from the very beginning of his ministry. In fact, let me show you in the scriptures where he's mentioned numerous of times. In Matthew chapter number 10, we find him there in verse 2, 3, and 4. It says, these are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, here he is, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. 
But let me show you also what the scripture shows about Thaddeus in Mark chapter number three, verse 16 through 19, because here you will find him again in the 18th verse. This is another listing of those who Jesus appointed as disciples. And in that 18th verse, you see Thaddeus is right there between Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot. Also, Luke chapter 6, verse number 13 through 16, is also another listing of the names of the 12 apostles. So it's very interesting as we look at the scriptures to see that Thaddeus is indeed a part of the plan of the Lord, and he is a part of the disciples that Jesus initially called. So there are some special mentions of him in the scripture and his family relationships, though they're not really crystal clear. Thaddeus is not frequently mentioned in the Gospels. He is actually listed among the disciples in various passages, as we just showed you. So, of course, in the Gospel of John, he is referred to there as Judas, not Iscariot. And Thaddeus is also known as Judas, the son of James over in Luke chapter six, verse number 16. Let's look at that very quickly, because in Luke chapter six, verse number 16, it says Judas, son of James and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. So he's named differently in certain passages of scripture than he is in other areas. And this indicates that he has a family relationship with James, another disciple of Jesus, and distinguishing him again from Judas Iscariot. So let's take a look at some of the key moments in the life of Thaddeus. Now, as we look at this, let's be reminded that all of us have key moments in our lives with Christ. And here's the first one. He was called to follow Jesus. He was called to follow Jesus. Thaddeus responded to Jesus's call to follow him and to become one of his devoted disciples. My question for you, my friend, is are you answering the call to follow Jesus as a devoted disciple? Let me offer you an action step to help you really internalize the need to follow Jesus as one of his close disciples. Respond to Jesus' call in your everyday life, following him wholeheartedly. Listen, he's calling all of us in our everyday lives to walk with him and to follow him and to do those things that he has called us to do. But the question is, are we indeed following Jesus on a daily basis? Well, let's look at something else that we see as a key moment in the life of Thaddeus. And that is that Thaddeus was a witness to Jesus's teachings and his miracles. He was a witness. He saw it firsthand. But let me tell you something. You are also a witness to Jesus's miracles and teachings. What is it that the Lord has done for you? that you can testify, that you can tell, that someone needs to know, you are witness to Jesus' teachings and his miracles. Thaddeus witnessed firsthand the teachings and the miracles and the compassion of Jesus during his lifetime and his earthly sojourn with him. Likewise, you and I also are witnesses of what Jesus has done in our lives. We ought to tell it. Get on the witness stand. Get out of the witness protection program and get on the stand and tell everybody what the Lord has done in your life. Now, here's an action step to help you to fulfill this key moment in your own life. Be attentive to God's work and presence in your life on a daily basis actively seeking to witness his power and his love. So be attentive, be looking for ways to witness his power and his love 
on a daily basis. Well, let's talk about a third key moment in the life of Thaddeus. Thirdly, Thaddeus was commissioned to preach and to heal. He was commissioned to preach and to heal. Along with the other disciples of Jesus, Thaddeus went about proclaiming the kingdom of God and healing the sick. Matthew 10 and 8 records that. Listen, all of us have been called, maybe not to be a preacher in the traditional sense of the church, standing up with a robe or cross and chain in the pulpit with a collar or or a microphone in hand, but every one of us is commissioned to preach and to heal. And here's what I mean. If you have been saved, you have been saved to serve and not to sit. You have a ministry, you have a calling, you have a purpose. Here's an action step to help you to embrace this concept of being commissioned to preach and to heal. Embrace the call to share the good news of Jesus and to bring healing to those who are in need, both physically and spiritually. Everybody must embrace the call to respond to the needs of other people. That's exactly what Thaddeus did. But there's another key moment in the life of Thaddeus I want to share with you this week, and that is that he had enduring faithfulness, enduring faithfulness. Thaddeus remained faithful to Jesus despite the challenges and the uncertainties of following him. And in doing this, Thaddeus demonstrated his steadfastness in his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us as believers in Jesus Christ should also have enduring faithfulness. Hard times are going to come, but we have to endure hardness as a good soldier. And the action step to help you embrace this point of enduring hardness this week is this. Cultivate a resilient faith that remains steadfast in the face of trials and adversity. You have to be steadfast in your faith. You have to believe God even through the most dark and dismal times of your life. And that's what we learn from the life of Thaddeus. By the way, if you just tuned in, I want to remind you that in the description box below, there is a free PDF handout that you can acquire. It's going to give you full notes of this teaching along with some personal discovery questions that you can share with friends and family or work through on your own. I love it when people take it and share it with someone on the other side of the country. You know anybody that's in the military who may not have access to God's word or may need some encouragement, send it to them as a PDF file and you can then help share and spread the word of God. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment below and let us know if you're watching and how this is blessing you. Well, let's now move to some of the lessons, the lessons that we can learn from Thaddeus' faith, his leadership and redemption. So number one, we learn that we have to have faithfulness in obscurity, faithfulness in obscurity. Now, Thaddeus' life remains a, a, a very powerful source to us to remind us that Faithfulness in serving God is not dependent on recognition or on prominence, but instead it's on sincere devotion to following Christ. Faithfulness is not about being prominent. It's about being a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, here's an action step to help you to put this truth into action having faithfulness in obscurity. Sometimes you may feel as if you are alone, isolated, unrecognized, that everything you're doing is going for not that not even the Lord sees you. But I want to tell you something, family and friends, serve God faithfully in whatever capacity or circumstances that you find yourself trusting that he sees you and he values your commitment. The Lord sees your labor and he values your commitment. So have faithfulness 
in your service to God, even when you feel like you are in obscurity. And of course, that means that you're not seen. You know, what you're doing is not on display. It's not about people. It's all about pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ and serving him even in times of obscurity. Here's another lesson that we learn from the life of Thaddeus, and that is this, that we must have humility in our leadership. We have to have leadership that's bathed in humility. Thaddeus exemplifies humble leadership, demonstrating that God's greatest servants are kingdom seekers. And our service to God is literally measured by our servanthood rather than by our status or our position. See, our servanthood to God is not based on our status. It's not based on our position. It's not based on who's celebrating us. It's about our servanthood to God. That's what it's all about, family. Here's an action step to help you have leadership in humility. Embrace humility in your leadership roles, whatever they may be. Prioritizing service and others well-being way above your own personal ambition. So God wants us to prioritize the well-being and the service toward other people above ourselves. That's not as easy as it sounds, but it is a mandate that the Lord wants us to do in order to be effective as believers. Well, let's look at another of the key factors that we can take away from the life of Thaddeus. Number three, was redemption and restoration. Thaddeus's life exemplified redemption and restoration. You see, despite his initial obscurity, Thaddeus's inclusion among the 12 disciples and his faithful service highlight the redemptive power of Jesus to transform lives and to use ordinary individuals for extraordinary purposes. You must understand, family, that there is redemption and restoration in serving Jesus. And so we have to trust in Jesus's power to redeem and to restore our lives, believing that he can use us for his kingdom work, regardless of our past and regardless of our perceived limitations. Because like Thaddeus, maybe you come to Christ with a limited background or maybe limited experience, or maybe you're not a part of uh, the silver spoon or the prominence of a certain family or what have you. But if you'll give him what you have, he'll give you redemption and he'll give you restoration. Anybody know I'm telling the truth? Put an amen in the comments right now. If you will give the Lord what you have, He'll give you redemption and he will give you restoration. Listen, I pray that you were blessed by this teaching this week. I want to encourage you. Don't forget to check the links below in the description box. Grab that free PDF handout. Share it with someone. This is part 10 of our series Lessons from the Twelve Disciples. And we've been talking about Thaddeus a journey of faith and leadership. And I'm so thankful for you being here. Thank you for coming every single week. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, leaving a comment, and even sharing the PDF handout with other people that you love. Thank you again for watching the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host. And until next time, we want you to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week right here on the midweek refill until then you go with <laughs>